eternal life is a free gift from God. Jesus died for you at Calvary. He is the way, the truth, the life, the door. If you believe in him, you shall be saved. Cause God's free gift to you is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Welcome once again to FGE TV which stands for Full Gospel Evangelism, a ministry that the Lord called me to start nearly 40 years ago. And we are dedicated to preaching, teaching, declaring, promoting the Word of God to as many people as possible by as many biblical and legal means as possible. We are dedicated to telling the world about Jesus Christ. A few months ago, I started to teach on the book of Genesis. And uh, we covered about two videos. And then I had to get into other things. I got busy. But I want to continue to talk about the book of Genesis because I believe it is such an important book. One of the things that we find as we look around the world today, the Bible gets attacked more than any other religious book. You can name any religious book and you will find that it is not ridiculed the same way as the Bible is ridiculed. You will never hear the leader and the founder of any other religion. You won't find that person's name being used in a profane way. But it seems that the name of Jesus is used as a form of profanity. If you hear jokes about religion, it is normally based on the Christian religion. The Christianity today is the most persecuted religion in the world. And uh, the Bible is the most attacked book. Have you ever noticed that when atheists or evolutionists want to promote their atheistic evolutionary agenda, they, the only book they ever criticise is the Bible. They never criticise any of the books of the Hindu, the Sikhs, the Quran, very seldom gets mentioned. But they always attack the Bible. And one of the things we want to take a look at today is, why is Genesis the most attacked book? We talked about this before in our first ep in our first introduction into this book. The Bible is being attacked from not only outside of the church, from atheists, evolutionists, members of other religion and non-religion, which you would expect. But unfortunately, the Bible is also being attacked by people that claim to represent the Christian religion. And they insult and ridicule the basic doctrines of the Christian faith. And they ridicule and they mock the word of God. The devil is in his most dangerous position when he is allowed to be a leader in the church and the devil has got his people. Jesus warned about false prophets and he said beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. 
the devil comes into the church. He may have a title of being a pastor, a bishop, an archbishop, a deacon, a prophet or a prophetess. They have titles. They may very wear, well wear religious attire. But having a white collar around your neck does not mean you've got Jesus in your heart. It does not mean that you are saved. Anybody can wear religious attire. Anybody can call themselves by a title. And anybody can be ordained of man. And just because a pastor is ordained by a denomination does not mean that they are chosen by God to be there. In fact, if you're not chosen of God, you've got no right to be there because the Bible says about Jesus, when he ascended up on high, he gave gifts unto men. He made some apostles. He made some prophets. He made some evangelists. And if God has not chosen you, then you are not chosen. Even if you're the archbishop or the ecclesiastic authority of your church has chosen you to be a leader, you're not a leader if God has not ordained you. I've often said that I cannot make anybody a pastor or a prophet, but what we do as men of God, we recognise the calling of God on a man's life, and then we ordain them into that ministry. But sadly today, we have got in our pulpits atheists dressed up as Christian, Christi Christians. They are religious atheist. They do not believe the Bible. They deny every fundamental doctrine of the Christian faith and they often promote lifestyles that are contrary to the Bible. Just because you've got a PhD or a BA and an MA does not mean that you are called of God to preach and teach the Word of God. In fact, in most churches, PhD might as well stand for powerless heretic dope because that's what most of them are, powerless heretic dopes that put themselves over. Let me tell you, friends, if you can have a Bachelor of Art, but if you're not born again, it makes no difference. If the Holy Spirit is not teaching through you, then it makes no difference. Because when you stand up to preach and teach and all you can talk about is what Dr. This says and what Dr. That says and what this theologian says and what that one in church history says, I don't want to know what they said. I want to know what God says. I want to know what Dr. G says. says. I want to know what the Bible says. And if you are in your preaching and in your teaching are undermining the word of God, then I don't want to listen to you. I will turn you off. And I recommend that if you are in a church that's always said that shouldn't be in the Bible or that's not true or that's not there, that shouldn't be there, then find another church. Find a church that believes that the Bible is the Word of God. Last time we spoke about people in our churches today, religious, liberals, heretics, wolves in sheep's clothing, that deny the literal six-day creation. They deny a literal Adam and Eve. I listened to a archbishop of a denomination which I won't name saying that Adam and Eve were not literal, they were figurative. Well, let me tell you, how can sin come into the world from someone who is figurative? How can death reign from Adam if Adam does did not exist. How can Jesus be the second Adam if the first Adam did not exist? The whole of the Bible falls apart if you deny the book of Genesis. You might as well throw the rest of the Bible away because Jesus believed in a literal Adam and Eve. Jesus believed that Genesis was true. 
And I believe the Bible in this ministry. We believe that the Bible is the inerrant, infallible, inspired word of the living God. And everything that we teach and everything that we believe is backed up by Scripture. Now I want this time to talk about the so-called contradiction between Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Last time I talked about why I believe in a six, six literal day creation, why I believe in a literal Adam and Eve, why I, why I believe that believing the book of Genesis is essential to the Christian faith. But today I want to talk about the so-called contradiction between Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 1. Let me tell you, I do not believe that there is any contradictions in the Bible. Now I know that there are some scriptures I have problems with, I don't understand, and they can seem like a contradiction, but just because we don't have an answer at the moment, does not mean that there is no answer. It is absolutely foolishness to say that just because you don't know something, therefore it's not true. There probably is an answer, and we need to pray for God to give us the revelation and the understanding. But when God gave us the scripture, he didn't give us explanations into every single detail. If he did, then the Bible would be bigger than the Encyclopedia Britannica and probably bigger than the world. But God gave us in his word what he wants us to understand. And I don't believe that there are any contradictions in the Bible. But there are people in a pulpit today and in the secular world that hate the Bible. Because the Bible speaks about that against their lifestyle. The Bible is a light to this world, but men love darkness because their deeds are evil and they don't want the word of God. When they want to get involved in marriages that go against the word of God, then they want to do away with the word of God because they want to live a life that is contradictory to the word of God and they want to live and they want their sinful lifestyle to be taught as normality in our schools and therefore they hate the Bible. They hate those that believe the Bible and they hate those that stand on the word of God and sadly some of those people con their way into a church and start teaching doctrines that are contrary to the word of God. Now, let me explain what I mean by the so-called contradiction of Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, which I don't believe is a contradiction. But let me read, first of all, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And later in Genesis 2 4, it seems that a second different story of creation begins. This is what some hold to. And let me tell, show you what they say is a contradiction. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 11, it says, And God says, Let the earth bring forth grass, and herb yielding seed, and a fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, and tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself this kind, and God saw that it was good. So Genesis chapter 1 implies that God created the fruit trees, the trees, the yielding fruit on the third day before he created man. So Genesis chapter 1 indicates that the fruit bearers, the trees, the fruit were created 
before God created man. But in Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 it says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, where he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Notice, Genesis chapter 1 indicates that God created the trees before he created man. And yet in Genesis chapter 2, it says God planted a garden eastward where he put man whom he had formed and out of the ground made, made the Lord God to every tree. So Genesis chapter 2 is saying that the trees were created, the fruit, the fruit bearing trees, etc. were created after he made man. And Genesis chapter 1 is saying it's before he made man. And some see that as a contradiction. But I don't believe there is a contradiction because Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 1 is talking about the whole of the world, the whole of the earth. On the third day, he brought forth fruit. But in Genesis chapter 2, it is talking about one part of that earth and that is the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was not the whole of the world that God created. It was only a part of the world that God created. And whereas all the trees were in general all over the world were created, God made man and he created fruit trees, etc., that were for the Garden of Eden. Now, what we, how is that not a contradiction? Well, it's not a contradiction. So first of all, Genesis chapter 2 is talking about Eden. It's talking about Eden. And the kind of trees and the kind of plants that God put in Eden after he made man were plants and trees that had to be cultivated. They had to be looked after. There are certain fruit in the world that need to be cultivated. But there are some fruits in the world that do not need to be cultivated. They will grow by themselves. They will look after themselves. But God put man in the, in the Garden of Eden. That was a garden that was apart from man. And he created trees and plants that needed to be looked after, needed to be cultivated. They needed a man to till the ground. Not every plant, not every vegetable in the world relies on a man to look after them. You can go to the rainforest, you can go into the jungle, and you can see plants and edible fruit, edible fruit, that does not need man to, to look after it. But there are some plants that do need to be cultivated and God made them after he made man because he needed man to tilt the ground. These were the kind of plants that needed to be looked after. So again, we don't have any contradiction in scripture. Now there is another thing that people say is a contradiction between Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. And let me read it to you now. Genesis 1 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and every thing that grew upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, 
and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Notice in Genesis chapter 1, it's telling us that God created the animals before he created man. Man was created after he had created the animals. But now, if we go over to Genesis chapter 2, we have what some people say is a contradiction. What some theologians call a contradiction and what some atheists like to throw in Christian's face. Let me read it. Let remember Genesis chapter 1, God created the animals and afterwards God said, let us make man. Man came after the animals. Now in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, it says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam. Notice, Genesis chapter 1, it says that he created the animals and then he created the man. But Genesis chapter 2 says he created the animals and he brought them to man. So that would imply that man has already been created. But Genesis chapter 1 says that man was created after the animals. But Genesis chapter 2 is saying or implying to some that God created man before the animals because he created the animals and he brought them to man so man would have had to been there and he says and Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field but for Adam there was not found a help meet for him and so do we have a contradiction here did God create man after or before genesis chapter one says afterwards but to some people they say genesis chapter two says that man was created first yet genesis chapter one says animals were created first so is there a contradiction i don't believe that there is a contradiction and i will try to explain why there is not a contradiction and that part of the problem is it's the way we translate the Bible in the King James Bible that seems to imply that but let me take a look at another translation of the Bible and that is the English Standard Version and it says in Genesis 2.19 now out of the ground the Lord had formed notice he had formed that means it already formed the animals and Adam was there so he took the animals that he had previously formed and he brought them to Adam. See, no contradiction. It's only the way some translations of the Bible kind of record it. But if we take a look again at the English Standard Version, now out of the ground the Lord God had formed. That means past tense when he created Adam he brought the animals that he had already created before Adam and he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them this same truth is taught in the DRB version of the Bible DRB Genesis 2 19 and the Lord having formed out of the ground notice those words and the Lord having formed this goes along with genesis chapter one it does not contradict genesis chapter one god had took the animals that he had already formed before man but he had not given them a name but when he formed man he then took the animals that he had already formed and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. The TLV version puts it this way. It says, Adonai Elohim had formed from the ground every animal 
of the kind and every flying creature of the sky. He brought them to man to see what he would call them. No contradiction. No contradiction between Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. Now you see friends, when there is a mis uh, when a scripture looks like it contradicts to each other, we know that God is not the author of confusion. So bearing that in mind, we will all, we should always look for an interpretation that reconciles the scripture. Now, of course, the atheist, the agnostic, the dead liberals that occupy the pulpit in our churches, they don't want the Bible to be reconciled. They're not looking for, a inter for an interpretation that unites the scripture. They are looking for something that divides the scripture so that they can ridicule, they can mock. Well, I am not here, actually, to answer the atheist, to answer the evolutionist, to answer the agnostic. I am not here to argue with liberal scholars because, to me, they are wolves in sheep's clothing. They are twice dead, and I don't debate and argue with dead people. I am here in this program to encourage you because you see the devil doesn't want you to accept the Bible as it is. The devil wants you to believe that the Bible contradicts itself because when you believe the Bible your faith grows. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. When you get a hold of the word of God you, you cleanse yourself from the filthiness of the flesh, where should a young man cleanse himself? But by taking heed uh, to the word of God, the word of God will take you from being a baby in Christ to take you to being a man or woman of God. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God that they may grow thereby. And as you accept the Bible on its and, and don't look for contradictions and, and don't accept contradictions and look for ways to reconcile in the scripture knowing that God is not the author of confusion and you feed on the word of God your faith is increased because faith comes up by hearing and hearing the word of God and if you are in a church that tells you well this bit shouldn't be in the Bible that bit shouldn't be in the Bible well Genesis chapter 1 is not really true there wasn't a literal six day creation that didn't really happen Jesus didn't really rise from the dead in a in a in a bodily form he rose in spirit now if you've got those kind of scriptures that kind of teaching get out of that church Find a church that believes the Bible is the word of God. Don't go to a church that undermines scripture, that tries to get you to doubt the Bible. Go to a church that believe, that where the preacher believes that the Bible is the inspired, inerrant, infallible word of God, where his doctrines are based on scripture, not on church history, not on what the Pope says, not on what some leader says, not on what is taught in church history, but they back up their doctrines by the Bible and the Bible alone, because you see friends, in this ministry, we believe the Bible. We believe the Bible. You know why I believe in miracles? Because I believe the Bible. You know why I believe in healing? Because I believe the Bible. You know why I believe that the gifts of the Spirit are for today? Because I believe the Bible. And I want you to believe the Bible. And I hope that this teaching on the book of Genesis has strengthened your faith because this is what we aim to do in these broadcasts. Well, I shall be talking more on the book of Genesis in the future. And then so I'm bringing this teaching to a conclusion. And until we meet again, this is Pastor David McKivitt saying unto you, and no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer.
Eternal life is a free gift from God. Jesus died for you at Calvary. He is the way, the truth. 